episode 100. Two years, over a thousand subscribers. I'm Billy, and today I'm going to take you through all the sweaters that I have knit since I started this channel in August 2020 at the height of the pandemic, when there was nothing better to do than sit around and knit all day. And action! In episode one, I promised to show you how I accessorize my knitwear. So today I've dragged out a lot of brooches, some necklaces, some earrings, and some other accessories. Some of them you can see here. And one by one, I'm going to show you each sweater and one possible way that I might accessorize it. Let the fun begin. So first up, I have the 1951 Mademoiselle. It's knit in DK weight Sandus Garn Duo in colors white and marine. I'm accessorizing it with a straw navy and white hat with little pom-poms. And these are vintage buttons from the period. I have sterling and lapis lazuli earrings and a navy blue 1940s corday handbag with lucite pull and metal zipper. This was knit on size five needles with three for the cuffs. This is The Evening in Edinburgh by Casa Pinka. I've embellished it with vintage buttons and a magenta and black felt hat, a vintage bow pin. It's knit in Neighborhood Fiber Company DK and the colorway is Truxton Circle. There's seam stitch on the cuffs and around the hem and up the button band. And like in any good fashion show, we'll do the slow reveal. I'll be right back with the genie. Jeannie is from Susan Crawford's Vintage Shetland Project. It's knit on size one U.S. needles, that's 2.25 millimeters, in nine different colors of a lace weight yarn. I always make sure to highlight that this was 46 stitches to four inches. I'm accessorizing it with these pink vintage style earrings with little crystals a mortarboard hat that's called University Jubilee, and I put some of the Fair Isle pattern into it. I also have these Lucite shoes that belong to my late mother, and they're pink leather, so I thought those would be a good accessory. I have worn these a couple of times. They do have leather on the bottom, um, and you can see a little leather on the heel as well. So even though there's absolutely no flexibility, once you get uh, your weight balanced right, they're not terribly uncomfortable. And the color is just right, don't you think? If it was 1937 Paris, Elsa Staffarelli was showing this on her very first sweaters in her collection. It's called the Bow Knot Sweater and hers was done in black with white. I chose this fuchsia color. I also chose to do the sleeve a little bit differently than hers and I elongated the bow. This was done as part of a knit along and I'll leave a link in the upper corner so you can go watch some of those videos currently on exhibition in Paris. I hope to make it across the ocean to see the original. I'm accessorizing with a vintage pin, 
some vintage crystal earrings, this vintage hat. The yarn that I used is Rowan Felted Tweed, and the colorway is Black and Barbara. Here we have the slit neckline sweater from the 1930s that was seen in the episode where I interviewed Sophie. I just love the one that she was wearing and asked permission to make one as well. And I did this sweater as a knit along too, although you haven't seen the others. I'm working on it. Some of them are not quite finished. Um, I'm accessorizing it with an Art Deco ring and no earrings. An Art Deco brooch from France that's someone else's initials. And these initials are those of my late grandfather. This was his watch fob, which I had converted into a necklace. Both of these are Marcosite. As well as the little velvet Juliet cap. The yarn is Eco Lush, it's fingering weight, knit on size three needles, and it's from Nurturing Fibers through Good Loops. Here we have Shells on the Beach, knit in Cascade, fingering weight, accessorized with a Whiting and Davis mesh bag and two pieces of jewelry from each of my grandmothers. This one was from my grandmother who came from Poland before World War I, no doubt made in Poland with some marcasites. And these are from my American-born grandmother, probably from the 1960s, but with a very vintage feel to them. The buttons that I used are celluloid, they're also vintage, and I consider them an accessory when they're this unique and beautiful. The pattern for the hat, again, courtesy of Sophie. So this is Mary Maxim's Prairie Prancers. It's really a child's pattern, but I adapted it to fit me. It's knit in San Miscarn, fritted scarn, which is a chunky wool, three and a half stitches to the inch. So it knit up pretty quickly. It is a charted pattern. And let me say thank you again to Michelle Mark for sending it to me as a gift. I have this tooled leather handbag that I accessorize it with and this double horse head pin. I keep this pin on here because I think it's just the perfect pin. The beret I had knit before and found it a little bit too voluminous, so I, I ripped the entire thing back and redid it in a little smaller size to exactly coordinate with this. This was my first attempt at designing my own sweater. I've done a couple of videos on it. It's called Thelma by Countess Furness. There's a whole story behind the name and behind the inspiration for this. So I'll leave links, you can go watch those. I'm accessorizing it with a silk hat that belonged to my mother, some jet beads and crystal beads, another vintage handbag by Whiting and Davis, mesh with celluloid frame and handle. The yarn again is by Sandus Garn. They're Sunday and mixed uh, partially with their tin silk mohair, fingering weight. Size three needle. song sweater. The birds go all the way around. 
it too is knit in Sandra's garn. They are not paying me. <laughs> they should be, but they're not. Um, the hat is vintage with a little faux bird on top. It's just me with feathers. I'm coordinating it with some red crystal earrings from Italy. This sweater is called the Elena. It's not a vintage pattern, but I thought it had a real vintage vibe to it and it's appropriate for summer days like this. It's knit in a cotton and wool blend by Oh Wool, and I have accessorized it with some chunky bangles and a red velvet hat. This is the Shanice cardigan. I put pearl buttons on here, and in keeping with the spherical theme, I have balls and balls within balls. <laughs> Um, some French chain earrings and some vintage milk glass beads. The design of the cardigan is by Jennifer Wood and I embellished it with my monogram. I charted that out and I used duplicate stitch. The yarn is cotton knit on the size five needle and it's by Yarn Art Jeans, white with this pearl gray trim. The beret is Salut Chevy by Sari Nordland, the first beret I knit. This is the cashmere merino pullover. It's neither cashmere nor merino, but the designer Yoshiko Hyodo named it that. I, on the other hand, used Lana Gross's Silk Hair and Paint Box Yarn Cotton DK on size seven needles. It has this really nice vintage feeling, lace panel, and an interesting construction. You start here, knit up and over the back and down, and then just zip up the side seam. Really easy knit, especially with that big chunky needle. The cloche that I'm accessorizing with is a pattern by Amy Christophers. It's called the Van Der Zee Cloche. And I've accessorized with some vintage glass beads and vintage crystal stone earrings made by my friend Vashti. So it's the stones that are vintage, but the earring is from the 80s. I'm sure you'll remember the episode where I showed this handbag and how I wanted to knit a sweater to coordinate with it. This is the sweater. It's called Harlequin. I collaborated with Roxanne Richardson by mashing together two patterns. I named it Harlequin because I thought this motif really was more like that than Charm with Checkers, which was the name of the other pattern. So do you think that I pulled off a good match? Because it's very tricky to order yarn based on the color you see on your computer screen. I think that it works out okay, but I'd love to know if you agree. The yarn is by Quince & Co. It's called Finch, it's their fingering weight. And I'll put a link to the episode. You can read all about the names of the colors. I've accessorized this with a vintage celluloid pendant, some very interesting opalescent glass beads, and another little vintage necklace. So I've got some green story going on. And these are celluloid earrings, Japanese with some crystal. And then of course, let's not forget the hat, the vintage hat that I whipped up to coordinate. It's so much going on in the last sweater that I totally forgot to tell you about these two pins, both of which are antique. Both of which have someone else's initials, both of which are marcasite. And 
I was also wearing this bracelet, which I neglected to mention. This is a contemporary bracelet. Has a real 1950s Miami Beach kind of vibe to it. Interesting construction. There's a magnet in here. So it just clamps together. This was given to me as a gift by a very lovely woman whose daughter was a friend of my husband's when they were in high school. She was wearing a lovely one in gray and I admired it. She said, oh, I have another one at home just like it. I'd love to send it to you. And this showed up. Green used to be my least favorite color, but somehow it's become a key color in my wardrobe. As you can see, there's some green in here and lots of green here and green in this. I put some green in my genie. So I didn't want to forget to talk about that. I want to tell you about the very last sweater, the sweater that I'm wearing. This was also done as a knit along very early on. I believe it was the first knit along that I did, come to think of it. It's called the Sirdar Chevron. It's a cardigan. These two little pins, which have my initials on them, were winking at me the day that I visited my friend Allison in her shop, Reverie, in New York. They were the only two she had, and they were exactly my initials, so you know that I gobbled them right up. Now, I wanted to show you before we part for today a very special piece of jewelry. This is called a duet. The reason it's called a duet is it's made up of two parts. Right now, it looks like it's just one single piece. What's that mask? Mardi Gras. It looks like it's just one single piece, but in fact, it's two dress clips, which can be hooked together to make one very large brooch. But the assembly of it is so unique that it's patented. Let me show you. Here's the pin if you're going to wear it as a brooch. The back is made up of a couple of layers. You have to really peel off the first layer. Can you see that? That comes out. So again, you clip this into place, but then you release that clip. So it's almost like a clip on earring, but it has a plum there that would hurt you if you tried to put it into your ear. It's designed so that it clips onto a dress and it doesn't slide off. So it has little grippers. And I thought that I would just show you that with this beret, I might want to clip this on here to accessorize it a little bit, jazz it up. Maybe I would do it in a different direction. just put it down here. That works. And I could take the other one and put it somewhere else if I wanted to do something like that. This cardigan was knit off of three individual cones of lace weight, maybe even finer than lace weight yarn from a company in the UK called Color Mart. It was the first time I ever knit off of cones and the first time that I ever knit with three strands of anything. But it really was very pleasant. This is probably one of my favorite sweaters because I really find that I get a lot of wear out of it. It's great for cooler summer evenings. It's also good for transitioning from one season to the next. It's just that in-between weight 
not too bulky, not too light. I've also accessorized this with a couple of ivory bangle bracelets. And the one in the center I picked up recently on eBay for a song. It has green and clear crystals in it. I'm pretty sure it's a celluloid bangle. It looks so much like the ivory, I just couldn't believe it. So, don't you love that sound? So reminiscent of olden times, like back in the 50s when women were jingling and jangling everything. So that about wraps it up. 14 sweaters, including the one I have on. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I would love for you to comment below, tell me which sweater was your favorite and why. So I hope this inspires you to think about what brooches, what earrings, necklaces, handbags, shoes, maybe you have scarves or gloves, hats, what you coordinate your sweaters with that perhaps can make them look vintage, even if they're vintage inspired or not vintage at all. I'd love to hear from you what some of your favorite accessories are, favorite colors of accessories. I've really been enjoying this adventure that I'm taking with you. I'm hoping to start taking more international adventures. I'm very seriously considering Shetland Woolwick. I've mentioned it a couple of times, but it's getting a little bit closer and I'm anticipating the possibility of actually getting on an airplane for the first time in two and a half, almost three years. One thing I can promise you is I will continue to knit and I will continue to bring you more episodes with my own knitting and the knitting of other fabulous vintage knitters. I will have some guests coming up in the near future. While I've enjoyed very much making each and every one of these episodes and I've enjoyed each of the guests that I've interviewed, it does take a considerable amount of time and energy. In the comments section, you'll find a way of supporting this channel. It's also in the show notes. It's always in the show notes. I appreciate you staying with me till the end, and I look forward to the next 100. See you next time. Ah. <laughs>